Hello my friends, welcome to Dishing Out this week. I am super excited and uh, here's why, we'll get to that in just a second. So, I recently signed up for a monthly subscription uh, where I get different cuts of meat sent to my front door. And uh, I did it because, um, I mean, I eat meat and it's a very convenient thing, but uh, also um, I got a free tenderloin in my first box. And don't mind the noise, by the way, that's just my dog, Anubis, uh, who can't seem to shut the heck up whenever I'm filming. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so I got a free tenderloin. I mean, I know we've done Chateaubriand, but we could do filet mignon, we could do um, beef wellington. The, the possibilities are endless, but I wanted to have you guys here with me when I unboxed it uh, so we can share in that joy together. So uh, let's give it a go. Well, uh, it is a tenderloin. It's a pork tenderloin, not beef. Pork. Hold, just hold on one second. Hello, uh, yes, is this Hello Butcher Apron? Hi, uh, my name's Chris. I recently signed up for your monthly subscription. Right, uh, I'm, I'm just calling in regards to the tenderloin. Oh no, 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 I got it. Yep, it is right here in my hand. It's a pork tenderloin. No, I was expecting beef. Yep. Yeah. Look, I am not upset. Uh, I am disheartened, but I am not angry at anyone. It is entirely my fault that I did not read the incredibly small print at the bottom of your website. Yeah, I just would like just just cancel my subscription. Yeah, thanks. That's all. Yeah, okay. Well, you have a nice life. Okay, bye-bye. I am sorry about that. Well, I guess when life gives you a pork tenderloin, you make pork medallions and a mushroom gorgonzola cream sauce. Am I disheartened? Dismayed? Yes. However, pork tenderloin is a pretty reasonable facsimile of beef tenderloin. It's just as juicy, just as tender, just not quite as beefy, and uh, quite frankly, given some of the recent occurrings around here, Maybe a good thing. Sorry. Um, what we'll be doing today is taking our tenderloin and cutting it into medallions. That serves two purposes. One, um, it looks a little bit fancier on the plate once you serve everything up, but more importantly, cutting it into multiple pieces or medallions before you cook it allows for greater browning. More browning means more flavor, and more uh, flavor is always a good thing when it comes to food, if you're asking me. Start by cutting your pork from the thick end in about two inch medallions or pieces. Now, when you get all the way down to the tail end, it's gonna get really thin. So you're gonna have to cut this about three quarters of the way through and then fold the two sides out and form it into its own medallion. Go ahead and then get your salt, season these up and dry brine them on the counter for an hour or up to overnight in the fridge. In the early goings of this season, we've already had quite a good bit of discussion about different types of pans, from the versatility of cast iron to the uh, ease of use of nonstick. But today, when it comes to our pork, we need to talk about stainless steel. Stainless steel is uh, awesome when you actually kind of want something to stick a little bit. Maybe not permanently on the bottom, but you want to get that bond, that delicious crud on the bottom of the pan that's going to turn into an amazingly flavorful pan sauce. Um, if you invest in a really good set of uh, stainless steel cookware, one that's clad where it doesn't have a plate uh, glued to the bottom or, or soldered to the bottom, but actually has all the different layers of cookware um, built in together, um, these things, much like cast iron, um, will last you a lifetime, especially if you take good care of them, which I would recommend. So when it comes to making any kind of pan sauce, you really only need four components, and actually uh, you can get away with less. You need a fawn, a delicious uh, flavor that's in the bottom of your pan, and you need a liquid to get it up with. Um, could be water, could be stock, wine, beer, anything. Um, you're gonna need an acid. Sometimes your acid and your liquid are the same thing in the case of you know wine, vinegars, things like that. Um, and then finally, you're gonna need a fat or something rich to emulsify the sauce. Butter uh, and cream would probably be the most used, but there are other alternatives. And then from there, optionally, uh, you can add in you know additional flavorings, whether it's you know, fresh cracked pepper, cheeses, fresh herbs. Um, you know, really, it's a blank canvas. Once you've uh, practiced it a few times and have the technique down, uh, you can really start to go crazy with it. The components of our sauce will be eight ounces of mushrooms. These are already chopped and they're looking a little bit uh, shaggy, but they'll be all right. 
Got one third of a cup of white wine, one half of a cup of heavy cream, that's the good stuff, some fresh gorgonzola cheese, which will crumble in, some fresh chives, and one shallot. Now, let's go ahead and get all this stuff ready. These are actually a mixture of button, cremini, and shiitake mushrooms, uh, but any kind of mushrooms will work. Just make sure you get them chopped up into pretty small pieces. The chives, you know, just run your knife through it into little tiny pieces as well. Nothing fancy needed here. Get those off to the side, and now it's time to cut the shallot. Being that it's basically an onion, we're going to cut it once down the middle, and then we're going to go ahead and cut off both the uh, stem tips and get it peeled. These little buggers can be annoying sometimes. Once you got it peeled, go ahead and make some uh, thin slices from end to end, um, all the way through the shallot one way, and then go ahead and turn it 90 degrees and go back through it the other way so you get that nice fine mince. Get both pieces of shallot uh, cut up, and then you know just get that into a bowl and set it aside for when we're ready to make our sauce. Now, go ahead and preheat your pan over medium heat until water dances and sizzles away like that. That's how you know it's hot. Go ahead and get in a tablespoon or two of oil, and now it's time to put in our medallions. And make sure you dry them thoroughly. They'll brown better that way if you get all the extra surface moisture off of there. Let them cook without disturbing them for about five to seven minutes until they are, uh, you know, beautifully brown on one side, like that. Go ahead and get them flipped, and then immediately into a 400 degree oven where they're gonna cook until they are cooked through to about 135 to 140 degrees. Use a thermometer, depends on the size of your medallions and your oven. Go ahead and uh, wrap a uh, towel around that pan because otherwise you will burn yourself and you will not be happy about it. Go ahead and get your medallions out of the pan to rest and return the pan to a medium high heat. Now at this point we've got the beginnings of our fond in there but there's still a little bit of liquid um, which we can work with. So go ahead and add in all of your mushrooms, get them into one even layer, and then, you know, just don't mess with them. Let them cook, release their liquid, and begin to brown for about five to seven minutes. Now, once they're giving off all their liquid and uh, the pan's starting to dry out a little bit and you're getting some brown crud in there, you can stir them around and go ahead and add in your minced shallot. You can cook that for a minute or two until it is getting fragrant. And then ultimately you want to start to see the bottom of the pan kind of take on a really um, cruddy kind of look where you're getting a lot of liquid that's evaporating like that and then um, kind of caramelizing onto the bottom of the pan. Man, there is some good flavor in there. Now we need to get it up. Add the white wine and uh, scrape. You want to use a pretty rigid spatula here, maybe even a piece of like a metal spatula um, to really get all those bits up off the bottom of the pan. Once you've done that and the uh, wine has evaporated a bit, go ahead and add in your cream and of course stir that to incorporate it as well. Now we're going to leave the pan over relatively high heat because we do want to reduce this sauce a little bit, but the last little bit of moisture and liquid we're adding in is all those delicious accumulated juices from our pork. We wouldn't want those to go to waste, would we? We're going to season this up with a nice fresh crack of pepper since we didn't put any on our pork and of course a pinch of kosher salt. Keep stirring that and reducing it uh, for a few minutes until it's starting to get a slightly thicker consistency. Now add in some of your gorgonzola cheese and look if you don't like it leave it out but uh, I really like that nice tangy punch that it adds so I'm putting in you know maybe a couple tablespoons worth and then melting that uh, lovingly into that beautiful sauce. Now you see how it's it's still um, leaving a little streak in the bottom when I run my spatula across it? That means that sauce has reached the right consistency, so now we just need to taste it for seasoning. Tastes good to me. Once that heat's killed, go ahead and add in some of your chives. We want to keep those nice, bright, vibrant, and green. And this sauce and this meal is ready to serve. For plating, you can serve this up aside some uh, fresh veggies, some potatoes as I did, or um, if you're really just feeling it, just go for the pork and the sauce by itself. I'm gonna give it a shot right now. Now, if you cook your pork properly, it'll be beautiful and rosy pink all the way through, as long as you take its temperature and pull it out at 135. Mm. 
pork is so tender, so juicy. The sauce is just packed with flavor. Mm. Wow, that is really phenomenal. If you've never uh, made uh, pork tenderloin into pork medallions before, or been terrified of pan sauces, I hope this week's video will give you some inspiration. Thanks for watching, and uh, hope you'll uh, drop me a like, drop me a few comments or questions down uh, below, and of course, come back next week for more Dishing Out. Until then, go make something delicious. Now, I really want to finish eating this, and I'm going to in just a second, but if you'll indulge me for just 30 more seconds, I have something I'd just like to share. My two cents, if you want to put it that way. Hopefully, in a few weeks, months, or even years down the road, people watching this video will um, wonder kind of what I'm talking about. But um, look, all I'm going to say is that when things seem a little hectic, a little out of sorts, when uh, those around you are panicking and, and, and freaking out, um, I think it's important to do things um, that ground us, both physically and mentally. And there are very few truly shared human experiences, but cooking and eating together is absolutely one of them. And uh, not only is it necessary, but I think it's also healthy and even in a way cathartic when everything else seems upside down and topsy-turvy. So just uh, get out of your head and get into the kitchen with your family, you know, spouse, kids, parents, um, or just by yourself and cook and eat and enjoy what you've made. That's all I have to say. Until next time, stay safe.